Legend of Total War here, and today Warhammer 3 Thrones of Decay has finally been announced. There will be no further delays to the thrones. And the three legendary lords have been announced for it. Elspeth von Draken, Tamrakan the Maggot Lord, and Malachi Mackeson. So, I'm not going to watch over the trailer here. I think it's a good trailer. Nothing particularly overly interesting in it. A few hints to a couple of units, which I'll talk about. Um... But I don't think it's really worth watching over it. I'll just leave a link to this if you want to go watch it if you haven't already. I imagine that most of you guys will have already watched it by now because I'm going to be uploading this maybe half hour, 45 minutes after it's been launched. And there are three separate um, links here on the Steam Powered Steam Store to look at for each of the Legendary Lords, which we'll go over here. So looking at Tamrakan, this is what we're getting. Some of it's not fully revealed at this stage. So his campaign is gather the chieftains from powerful factions across the known world and become the ultimate warrior of Nurgle as Tamrakan, which sounds very familiar, I think. Sounds very familiar to Warriors of Chaos, which is kind of what they do. Um, so they'll have to put some kind of spin on that to make it a little bit different. Otherwise, yeah, it sounds almost identical to Festus's campaign. Now, Tamrakan is pure Nurgle. He's not Warriors of Chaos. But I'm, I'm certain that a lot of the stuff that that is coming for Nurgle is going to be given to or be made available to Beastmen and to the Warriors of Chaos maybe even Norska we'll see so um, we'll just have to wait and see with that so one of the first to flock to Tamrakan's banner the new legendary hero Kazik the Befell joins the Maggot Lord side and I imagine the Warriors of Chaos will have access to that as long as you're not playing as one of the champions of Chaos that are opposed to Nurgle that is so it should be available to um um, Festus, Archeon, Bellacor, probably Kolek, and I doubt uh, Sigvald. Don't know. Probably just a melee hero. I don't really know anything about him. So the Chaos Lord of Nurgle and the Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle reinforce, reinforce the Grandfather's Throng as a new Lord and Hero choices, respectively. So the Chaos Lord of Nurgle is... There's a lot of these lords and heroes, right? We don't have this one currently, and this is greatly going to benefit the Warriors of Chaos. Now, if you're playing the Warriors of Chaos and you recruit a melee lord, just a Chaos Lord, right? You can currently dedicate them to Korn and to uh, Zinch and to Slanesh. You can't dedicate a melee lord to Nurgle currently, and this will allow you to do so, uh, I imagine, for the Warriors of Chaos. Respectively as well, with the Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle being a hero, you cannot... You can get a Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle, so the way that you do that is you recruit a, a Death Wizard and then dedicate it to Nurgle and then they become a Nurgle Spellcaster. But you weren't able to get the hero, so what was available for them was Slanesh and Zinch. And now you'll have available the, uh, the Nurgle one as well, which is especially good for Warriors of Chaos because that means that you'll have, be able to put a healer in all of your armies that aren't necessarily commanded by, um, the, like, a, a, a lord or demon prince of Nurgle, which has, has currently been pretty much their only uh, healer option. So this is greatly going to benefit the healing capabilities of the Warriors of Chaos, especially if you're going with single unit entity spams, like with Kolek Sarnita with his uh, Dragon Ogre Shagas. So this is great for Nurgle, but you know who really benefits from this? Warriors of Chaos, massively. Now, I would say that as far as interesting characters are concerned for it, they went a bit generic, but this fills in blanks that were obviously left blank on purpose for Thrones of Decay. Now, funny thing here is that there is no respective um, gap for Korn and Slanesh. You know, they've got all their respective um, Warriors of Chaos counterparts. There is a melee lord available for Slanesh, and a spellcaster for Slanesh, and you're obviously not going to get a spellcaster of Korn. So that leads me to believe, and based on the information that I've actually been sent from my sources, is that there is currently no planned Slanesh or Korn DLC to fill in those sort of gaps there. Um, I know that with the original roadmap, there was like a hint of it being a Slanesh DLC, but I believe that that's been scrapped. We'll wait and see what happens with that, though. They may still get some content, but I'm not sure if they're going to be a like a Thrones of Decay or Shadows of Change style DLC. They're not going to get one of those. And then they're going to get five new units and three regiments of renown, um, including the Mutated Plague Ogres and Monstrous Tro Dragons. So this is stuff that we saw in the trailer. So yeah, they mentioned the stuff in the trailer, but there's still three other units 
to um to be added now this bit here pure speculation i haven't got inside information about this i'm ex i'm hoping to see bile trolls ever since i played vermintide i was like how come we don't have these in total war warhammer i was like okay we need a nurgle dlc for that or just you know that was before nurgle even came out as a faction so i kind of suspect that trolls will or bile trolls will be available for warriors of chaos and you can take a regular troll and convert it into a bile troll with with the dedication to nurgle which i'm hoping that's the case now that's pure speculation i don't know if that's actually the case so that's the tamarkand the maggot lord this is the one that i'm most interested in out of the the three packs then we've got malachi mckayson so this is the one that i was given the, the i guess the least amount of information about i didn't know if it was malachi mckayson i sort of suspected but it would have been pure speculation not a leak and i really want to make a distinction between when I'm speculating and when I've actually been fed some information from somebody that has or currently works at Creative Assembly or Sega. See, um, but when it comes to Malachi, I wasn't given any information, so that's why I didn't mention anything about it, because I didn't know. So, seek a glorious death, reap the rewards, and test your latest innovations as Malachi. So, Malachi McKayson, um is a slayer, but also an engineer. Now, I listened to quite a few, well, just a couple of um, Gotrick and Felix ebooks on audible and i believe he greatly uh, he, he's there for the most part in um the third one where they go to karak doom using his airship so that was quite interesting that was my favorite of the uh, the ebooks that i have listened to so far i do want to listen to more of them so bolster your units from the skies with the spirit of grungi a mobile workshop and transport vessel so i kind of suspect that this might be a like a horde type unit that you can Maybe like a black arc, but in the sky. Wouldn't that be interesting? A actual, like a black arc that has, that can just like fly over mountains and it just does stuff for you. Maybe it's got like Ikit style um, workshop. I don't know. So that's also very interesting to see what that's. I may be getting my hopes up a little bit, but um, that sounds good. Uh, Garagim, Garagrim Iron Fist, the war mourner of Karak Kadrin and son of Ungrim Iron Fist, joins, as Malachi, joins Malachi as a legendary hero. So, imagine he's just a Slayer legendary hero. Basically, a weaker version of Ungrim, I suppose. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, we've got quite a few Slayer characters now coming. And a new generic Lord and Hero, which hasn't been mentioned. Maybe Slayer-focused? Don't know. I'd, I'd like to see more Slayer stuff. Even though I've totally shat on, on Slayers in the past, they do definitely have their, their use now. They found a nice balance for them. And then, as for units, um, I did mention that there was some leaks that I had. Hang on, let me have a look here. I'm just getting the email up on my other monitor. About units that... Because it's not mentioned anything here. I mean, obviously you can see certain units in the trailer. A lot of them, like the the flying units so here are the four units that i have been leaked to by sources they didn't want to give us everything so dwarven battle barge mechanical steed mount marienberg landship and norn ironsides now those are the four units that that's leaked information to me right not speculation now if any four of any one of those isn't in this dlc then Pretty much everything that I've said about leaks needs to be called into question but if all of them are in then I feel like you know, reliable sources. We'll see. Anyway, so this stuff here definitely seems good. They really needed to up their game from uh, from Shadows of Change to, to really bring players back to um, to Total War Warhammer 3. And hopefully they're going to do that. Okay, and then the third is Elspeth Von Draken, who was a leaked lord to me and turned out to be correct. So embrace the strengths and magic... Of, sorry, embrace the strengths of magic and gunpowder with Nolan's Imperial Gunnery School. Purchase exclusive and powerful units by unlocking the Amethyst Armory. Maybe they're like um, the Mistwalker units. I have no idea. Uh, travel instantly between friendly settlements with the Gardens of Moor. They're, they're, they're adding more like transportation and teleportation type stuff in Warhammer 3. Because obviously the map is so much bigger than what it was in Warhammer 2. Getting around a lot easier uh, is is a big benefit if you want to play a longer stage campaign because it's kind of annoying to have to manually move a like imagine imagine moving an army from <laughs> from say Nuln all the way to Cathay because you've just like you just got to get over there it would take you forever you'd be better to just disband the army and just re-recruit it in Cathay anyway uh, Theodore Bruckner 
the Hound of Judgment and a skilled fighter joins the Empire as a legendary hero. Now, I wasn't told anything about information about a legendary hero, and this is definitely not what I expected. I was kind of hoping for the Reichsmarschall dude, but I guess this guy makes a bit more sense. To be honest, I don't really know who he is. Not, I don't know everything about the lore. Um, I know a lot of people are suspecting that Boris Toddbringer is coming as the legendary lord, FLC, but from what I've been told, it's Epidemia, so we'll see if that's actually correct. So improve your odds with five new units, a generic lord, a generic hero, and further three regiments of renown. I imagine that the generic lord will probably be a spellcaster lord, since that is something that is severely lacking for the empire, and the generic hero will probably be an engineer type hero, and that sort of c covers her theme of her campaign with magic and gunpowder. So they'll get some sort of null engineer that'll allow you to attach to an army, increase your campaign movement range, very similar to what a um, engineer does uh, with dwarfs or a warlock engineer with the, um, with the Skaven. So quite a few factions have that now and that would sort of really round the empire out. Um, I don't know where she's going to be starting. It, I don't think it makes sense to put her in Norn. Maybe in the Realms of Chaos campaign, put her in Norn, because it's there. Uh, but as for Immortal Empires, if you put her in Norn, you're sandwiched in between um, Balthazar Gelt and Karl Franz, and you've got too much concentration of Empire Legendary Lords in one location. So I don't think they're going to put that there. And it says in here that she's got, like, friendship with Norn. So she's not necessarily going to be she's not the elect account of Wissenland, but all of this sounds interesting and that's um that's really all the information that we've got here on thrones of decay so now what will happen is the the uh the trickle of blog posts as they talk about the the content bit by bit the drip feed of information there's nothing wrong with that as they move towards the actual release uh which will probably be very late in april because these these marketing cycles, they usually try to build up hype over the course of like two or three weeks. And there's still two or three weeks left of April, so we'll see how we go. Now, in terms of what you can expect from content from me, I'll cover the stuff as it comes through, if it's interesting. I'm definitely going to purchase all three packs. As for what I'm going to cover first, probably Tamrakan, because that seems most interesting to me. Um, but I just want to point out that I'm not pre-ordering this, okay? There's no benefit to pre-ordering any of these, as far as, as far as I could tell. I'm going to purchase this the day it comes out. You do whatever you want with your money, but just keep in mind that the shut up and take my money CA attitude of the past 12 months or a few years back kind of got us into a really hot water. So maybe just think about that before you uh, blindly pre-order, okay? Um, you're not going to get anything different whether you purchase it today or whether you purchase it two weeks from now. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, that's all we've got for you today. Uh, don't forget to check out the trailer if you haven't already. Uh, appreciate you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. And I'll keep you informed with information as I get it. Later, guys.